call p the power density. This is a function of position such that p of r equals the energy released from fission e sub f times the macroscopic fission cross-section times the flux. Therefore, the total power for a volume, V, in centimeters cubed is equal to the integral of P as a function of position over all volumes. The average power density, denoted by angle bracket P of R, close angle bracket, is equal to the total power density divided by the volume. To obtain the core average power density, normalize P of R by the average, or the fraction P of R divided by bracket P of R, close bracket. This represents the fraction of the core power that is produced in any given volume. When the macroscopic fission cross-section is constant, this means that it's not a function of position. And therefore, P of R is equal to the energy released per fission, E sub F, times the constant macroscopic fission cross-section, times the flux, which are, remains a function of position. This is called a homogeneous system, because the material is the same everywhere. Furthermore, we can define a spatially averaged flux, F of R, as the power is a function of position divided by the core average power, which, in the event of a homogeneous system, the energy released per fission and the macroscopic fission cross-section both cancel, so the spatially averaged flux is just the flux as a function of position divided by the average flux. Therefore, for homogeneous systems, the core average power density is equal to the power density divided by the spatially averaged flux, as we see in this equation. In most reactors, it is desirable to have as flat of a power and flux profile as possible. This means that the flux should be approximately the same everywhere in the core. A flat profile helps maintain consistent thermal hydraulic properties, such as preventing hot spots, throughout the core. It also ensures that each region of the core obtains the approximately the same burnup and has the same fluence. Symbolically, flatness can be represented as the core average power density tending towards the maximum power, the core average flux tending towards the maximum flux, and the spatially average flux going to 1. This is an ideal and does not actually happen in real systems, but it's something that we should design towards. Average power densities are affected by the geometry of the core. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Here we see a normal bare slab reactor with a vacuum out region outside. The core average power tends to be somewhere near the middle, about 2 over pi, of the maximum value for the power. If instead we added a reflector rather than having a vacuum, where the reflector bounces neutrons back into the core, we'll see that the shape of the power shifts such that the core average power is significantly higher than without the reflector. For our second example, let's examine a three-region bare slab reactor. If all three regions are the same, we're left with the same homogeneous system that has the normal cosine shape, and the core average power sits at about 2 pi of the maximum power. This is exactly the same uh, situation that we saw in the bare slab uh, previously. If we instead modify this reactor to make it so that there's a low region of reactivity in the middle with relatively high regions of reactivity on the ends, we'll see that we obtain a flatter flux and power profile because the low reactivity region is not able to achieve the same 
power heights as it was if it was the same reactivity as the high reactivity regions. So a non-homogeneous system that is designed in this way can achieve a flatter, flux, a flatter flux and power profile. Therefore, our core average power density is relatively higher as compared to when we had a homogeneous system. Additionally, let's call big Q the heat in gigajoules and little q the heat rate in gigawatts. The linear aerial and volumetric heat rates are therefore Q prime is the linear heat rate, which is defined as the first derivative of the heat rate, Q. Q double prime is the aerial heat rate, defined as the second derivative of Q. And Q triple prime is the volumetric heat rate, rate defined as the third derivative of the heat rate Q. Let's also note that the core average power density is proportional to our volumetric heat rate. So therefore we can define a, what we call a heat flux factor F sub big Q of R, which is a unitless quantity, as the ratio of the volumetric heat rate to the average volumetric heat rate, which if you integrate is equal to the aerial heat rate divided by the average aerial heat rate, which if you integrate again is equal to the linear heat rate divided by the average linear heat rate.